Hi there. Welcome to the Tuesday Night Music Show, where sometimes we actually talk about music. This show, like all our other shows, is brought to you by DJ Event Planner at www.djeventplanner.com. Have a look at the description of this video for some of our other sponsors. And visit their websites and see what they're all about. They're the ones bringing you this broadcast. Because I'm telling you something, Jay, he's not a cheap date. We need sponsors to keep him on here. Yep. Big money to get me going. Can I tell you? John, he, he, he's, yeah, he not so much, but still, you know, it ain't free. So, John, thank you for being here. He doesn't have my agent, so he's not he's not pulling down the money I'm pulling down. So I'm just saying. We'll leave it there. Tonight, we're going to talk about something music. Before we do that, let's do... Boston John's record roundup. <laughs> because know what that was. Is that a rubber chicken? F Troop oh, F Troop meets uh 1980 <laughs> DJ sound effect. Nice. Yeah, nice. Doing what I can. All right. Yeah, Gary Newman does the death uh the um the F Troop wah, 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 wah. Uh, theme song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you got for us this week, John? Um I couldn't find the greatest hits record, so I had to pull two two from the malt here to talk about an artist that we have not discussed here on the show. Okay. Um, this would be through the middle of Miami freestyle towards the end of that whole house was going on. I'm surprised we've never mentioned her name on the show, but I thought I would like to share with the class. Samantha, Samantha Fox. Fox. Love Samantha Fox. Now this, this has the naughty girls need love too, which of course was her biggest dual sing sided single. It's got I surrender on the other side. Yeah. But even naughty before girls that, I mean, I had bought Touch Me when that came out. I'll keep my hand. Oh, you bought that when it came out? Keeping her hiney covered here. The, um, well, don't do I, that. I bought that for Touch Me, Please. and then the singles just kept coming. And yes, um, in addition to those, I've got singles, which I couldn't pull up quick enough. I, I want to have some fun. Yes. Uh, I only want to be with you, which was a Bay City Rollers cover. She was pretty pretty much in solid rotation for for that cycle of dance. She was just like, uh, like you'd play Shannon or you'd play... Uh, so if it was kind of R&D crossover, but she worked. In, oh, yeah. Uh, I worked in freestyle, freestyle sets. Well, she yeah. was working with Full Force, wasn't she? Yeah. Uh, Naughty Girls and I Want to Have Some Fun. Yeah. And then well, Love House was a trip, too. Love House was like house music. It was it was dope, like kind of house hip, house urban crossover track. I, I like her. Yeah, a, a lot of her stuff, it still has a really fresh sound. And if, yeah, if you're not playing or are unfamiliar with her, pull her up and give uh, give her top 10 a listen. I know she has a greatest hits record that's come out since. She but, does. Uh, there are, I have uh, it. Lots, lots, of, lots of good material from her. And she's uh, upbeat and bubbly. And she's fun to look at. So Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I was big on Samantha Fox, especially as soon as I heard, you know, I want to have some fun. That was just a banger. Just a banger. And then Naughty Girls, down tempo, but still a banger. Yeah. A little bit of attitude in her songs, but nothing obscene. I mean, it's it's very much radio playable, family friendly. So check yeah. it out. That well, be my, for the most part. Really. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Jay, what do you have for us this week? Well, it's funny. I I kind of switched gears really quickly because it dawned on me that I thought I'd bring up an artist we haven't talked about. I'm, I'm guessing you both will know this artist, but I won't be shocked if you don't. Okay. Um, and she came on my radar because her album came out in 78 and she was 16. Okay. And WBCN in Boston played her one, okay. two songs particularly. And they kept mentioning, Hey, here's this new stiff records artist named rachel sweet who's yeah. 16 years old and the big track that she opened with was who does lisa like which i still think is a banger and the other one was a track called wildwood saloon and she has a beautiful beautiful voice if you listen to it it's very beautiful for the time it's not adele beautiful but she just had a really sweet way of singing she was involved in stiff records so she had a lot of like Lena Lovitch was doing background vocal and Bram Tchaikovsky was doing guitar. She had that whole, you know, IRS slash stiff records crowd. This, the miles Copeland people 
they were all kind of interchanging at that time that period uh, Stuart copeland's brother who produced the police and yeah the drummer the, well you, his no the, the brother drummer. the drummer of the police miles copeland and Stuart. Stuart copeland are brothers right but Stuart copeland is the drummer of the police yes that's yeah i thought you said he produced them no no well you're talking about producing. i'm talking about who produced them yeah miles his brother miles started, produced the police he did he started irs yeah, yeah. um irs records and management stuff but yeah it's really interesting to check out because it's very kind of it's not new wavy it's almost more I, what would you think john more punk it's R&B. I think I heard her first in like 81, 82. She had a track called Voodoo that there was a video for. Yeah. It used to be on Friday Night Videos even. Uh, and she looked obviously really young. She looked, you know, under, under 20. She was like, you know, late teens. Yeah. Um, she, but she I was. still I still have that in rotation every Halloween. It's just, it's a banging song, even though it's what, 43 years old now or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. I give her a thumbs up vote too, for sure. Yeah, really, really good. Um and like I said, you know, it's not what you would expect when you think of great vocal, but it was a different time. It's like saying Tom Waits, a great singer to somebody that's never heard him. And then they hear Tom Waits and they go, what the, but it's contextual. So have we nailed that an album for her? Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Fool around. And that was yeah, 78. That, yeah. That was in 78. That's her first okay. release. Okay, but, right on. Or at least check out the tracks. Who does Lisa like and Wildwood Saloon? Great songs. Nice. In the interest of killing time, I'll make a short story long. Why not? We've knocked out record roundup relatively fast this week. Normally it goes like 20 minutes. So uh I discovered something weird yesterday. I kind of knew about it, but you should have I a doctor look at it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I turned Stevie onto it. Okay. And it's the store where one day everything's ten dollars, the next day it's eight dollars, the next day it's four dollars, and then it gets down to one dollar, and then they close to the restock and start all over again. So we went in there, we bought a couple of things, spent like two dollars of love is fence and got some neat stuff. Um, and it was it was the the two dollar day, but everything was three for a dollar in these bins. So we told Blanca about it, we went back again today. Oh, how'd it go? Well, found some fun things. Uh, I found these cool bottles, for example. I thought these will look really dope in my bathroom. Like I can pop the cork out of this bottle. Yeah, it's like a glass. It's like bottle. a rose in it. Yeah. Well, it's black. It's it's not transparent. No, no, no. Like put like a single. Yeah, or something like you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. orchid or whatever. But re really cool. Black and rose. Good for examination. I noticed that it's not a real bottle. It's got a little thing down here. What is and it? When I flip the switch. That's where the genie lives. It glows and, <laughs> and it and it says poison. The Halloween decoration is what it is, but it's kind of neat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah I don't turn neat. the light on. You don't. I figured I'd turn it around the bathroom for now and then on Halloween I'll do this and it says poison. Yeah, it, boy, man. Yeah. I, I thought that was that cool. Totally for for 33 cents, you know, I got that. And then I got this one here, which is uh very similar, except Instead of uh, that style of bottle, it's this style of bottle, and it's got a snake on it. That'd look cool on a desk. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. You know, just kind of you know, cool if you're a member of the band Poison or something, especially like, but right, like, they'd be they'd be down with that. They'd be like, oh, we love those. Send them. So those are the weirdo things that I was finding, and when we were checking out uh, at one of the stores, and oh, Blanca loved it. By the way, she she found all kinds. Of, we bought candy, leftover Christmas candy. Like for thirty three cents, like these big things of candies and Do they have one of those cereal. big buddy ten pound Hershey bars. Those were gone because I wonder they where. I wonder where Brian. I wonder where. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Yeah, might have gotten a hold of those. Look, I still haven't. Yeah, you have. Right, still need. I know. I know. Like, AI and AG and CGI. It's like his fifteenth one. He's just not telling us I'm that. Just saying. Yeah. So I looked behind the counter as we were checking out, and mostly had records. Uh oh. There we like, go. Wait a minute. What, uh -oh. what's going on with that just you want to look through i'm like yes please <laughs> what i do <laughs> how much are these i guess you could have them okay they were they were four dollars a piece oh okay. and i saw a lot of very new stuff like new stuff that's that i'm playing off of my top at usa and promo only at the club you know really yeah a lot of new stuff but i'm not interested in it to have it on record but there was a lot of it 
And then they had like a stack. I saw this, this like, you see the color patterns, multiples of this one record. And I'm like, I wonder what this one record is. It was on the bottom. Yeah. So I'm flipping through and I've seen, I'm like, oh, hell no. Prince Black. So I bought, I bought not one, but two copies of this. Okay. And that would be the Guardians of the Galaxy Deluxe. On vinyl. Vinyl oh, edition. For $4. Yes. For four bucks, <laughs> you should have bought them all and put them on Discog. I might, I might go back. <laughs> Seriously, what are they tomorrow? Two bucks? Well, they're close for restock, so I'd have to go back the next day. Oh, okay. But it's it's brand new, sealed, and I haven't even looked at the track listing. So this is insane. That's would you so would cool. you like to hear the track listing? Oh, this yes, would be good. This would be good. This and is this is this is a four dollar brand new four dollar record at this weirdo place. Yeah. New news, hot bargains place. Stevie thought it was a porn shop because all the windows were blacked out. So she wanted nothing to do with it. I'm like, no, no, no. I think this is one of those weird stores that they buy like Amazon crates of overstock and stuff. Sure. Yeah. So, so, so okay, right Here is the track listing. Track number one is Blue Suede Hooked on a Feeling. Okay. Two, go all the way raspberries. First movie. Three, Spirit in the Sky. Okay. Green Bomb. Yep. Um, Four is sweet. Uh, Moon Eyes Daydream, David Bowie. Five is fooled around and fell in love, Elwell and Bishop. Yep. Uh, six is I want you back, Jackson. Five. That's that's slide one. A banger so far. <laughs> um, slide two of disc A is I'm not in love. Ten CC. Yep. And there's come and get your love, Redbone, Cherry Bomb, Runaways, Escape the Pini Colada song, Rupert Holmes. Your fave. Ain't no mountain high enough, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. And then the the next um wasn't Sweet in the first movie? I thought Sweet's um Fox on the Blitz Run. or Fox on the Run or something was Fox on the Run is in one of them. I can't remember which one. I have Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It's a picture disc, but I didn't Maybe have it's one. On that this one. Is the deluxe edition. Well, the okay. the cool. second disc is the original score. Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, it's it's stuff like... Um, Some of those scores are great because no one's got them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they recognize it. Yeah, Guardians Untitled, uh, the Nova Upgrade. I think there was one on here. Yeah, what a bunch of A-holes. You know, there was just music they were playing when they were going yeah, through the, the lineup stuff. of who they were. Anyway, yeah. So, yeah, I got two of these. I got one Smart here. Player. I got another one here. I just thought, you know what? Just grab two. Yeah. Sometimes as a DJ, you want two copies of things. But yeah, I'm going to look this up on Discogs and see if I can score uh, by buy going back and buying more and selling them because four bucks is pretty cheap for this. And yeah, I'd and say it's so. Fun. It's, it's tons of fun just to have. It's tons of fun. So anyway, that that's my uh, my pick. That's a good grab. I, I thought it was. For the money, that's a really good grab. So yeah. somebody, they wanted to buy one. They checked 10 and they sent back the nine copies. <laughs> So it went on the pallet. Well, there were several <laughs> records. I mean, uh, what was I? Uh, what are the new stuff did you see that you can remember? Like, what are the new things that you're playing? Like new artists vinyl? Yeah, it's new artists. Huh. There's an artist called Youngblood. Yeah. Um, that I've seen. Uh, th there were several. There was a, a new Alicia Keys album. There was a lot of stuff that, wow. that I... It's new stuff. It's not like, yeah, you know, crusty, you know, seven years ago shit. It's new stuff. Um, newer wow. stuff. I mean, stuff that's relevant and people are asking for. Yeah. How not, far not, is this place from your house? On 27th Street, so far. Oh, perfect. Well, there's one on 27th and one on 76th, and they're they're within miles of each other. Yeah. But that's uh, Sounds like a place you'd leave a number like, hey, next time you see an allotment of records come in, why don't you, why don't you <laughs> give me a ring and I'll... Well, the cool part about the records is they're behind the counter. You got to ask to look at them. So it's not like, you know, if you notice them, great. They're not telling you they're there, but like, is that a stack of records or their calendars? I couldn't yeah. tell. I'd find out what they like from Starbucks and <laughs> dip in with a couple of <laughs> hot French vanilla lattes and your business card and go, hey, you know, well, well I've made it. Cash fund, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I've made it pretty clear that, I mean, what I normally gravitate towards are, are old pressings. I don't really care for re releases. I don't really care for new records so much. But once in a while, I'll go for it. Once in a yeah. while, I'll do it. I, I did it with. You bought two. Stuff. 
Well, I just bought two. Yeah, I mean, for that price, what the hell, you know? Let's right. Do it. I'm just saying there might be more down the road like that. Yeah. So when I go back, I'm going to look and see what's going on. Hey, let me look through the records. Let's see how many of those are in print and what are they going for? That'd be a... Right. I mean, a lot of the stuff, I mean, the, I don't know where they're from, um, but a lot of them are record day exclusives. Oh, that's a huge thing. I didn't realize how big that was. Yeah. I've, I've heard that term about four times in the last week about, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. We put this out on vinyl. It was a record day exclusive. Yeah, this is a record day exclusive, the deluxe yeah. edition. So, so well, yeah, remember the I, I don't know. Album? Yeah. That was a record day exclusive that sold was out. It? Yeah, that day. They're on eBay for like 300 bucks now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, you got to be kidding. I'll just get the digital download. But Right. I mean, I mean yeah. I, I, why, why do I need something that's recorded digitally on analog it doesn't make sense I just yeah but it's because you love but, vinyl i mean well no it's I, I i like it you know because well for djing purposes that's why i primarily click 12 inch singles i do have some lps but most of the stuff i collect is 12 inch singles especially if they're analog recordings then i can listen to them as they were intended to be listened to yeah, but you, you can know, also rip them yes yeah, you stuff. ever rip any of them once in a while there are some things that you just can't get digitally yeah. so you rip it a lot of the house music stuff is like that especially a lot of those smaller labels like dg international out of chicago that that stuff if it was on disc you just can't find it yeah there are other things like prince's or not prince but the family album the the act that prince produced they they're, they're the ones who originally did nothing compares to you Right. That was never available. Well, it was available on CD, only Jap Japan. And last I looked at the price on that thing, it was four hundred dollars. That was about twenty years ago. Because it's very rare. So that I have ripped. I mean, things like that I do rip. But yeah, if you can get it on digitally, might as well, because that's how you're going to use it most of the time. But right. some things it's just cool to if, if it's an analog recording and especially if it's on a 12 inch it's a nice wide groove and if it's 45 man that stuff sounds amazing it's just it's got a very different sound to it but i, I i'm not that guy that says everything sounds better on record because everything doesn't sound better on record but True. some things do and some instruments do that's why a lot of dudes like real audio files are into classical and old jazz it does sound better on record to them you know yeah. especially strings you know oh my gosh Analog synth to me sounds wonderful on record. But There's not. a depth, yes. I think, that people, if they, and the word that we all know is warmth. That's yeah. always the go to, like, oh, there's a certain warmth. It's well, like, yeah, warmth. yeah, I've heard that argument. Uh, you don't typically get the bass out of a record that you would on something digital. You just don't. That's what um, her powers was so famous for, was his mastering of records where he was able to make things like have more bass than most people who mastered. He was the guy who mastered things like Shannon's let the music play right. and Africa about his planet rock. And yeah, it was a huge was like, records. Yeah. All like the best freestyle tracks, you know, all the best electro tracks, you know, he did a lot of that stuff. He did it for cutting records. He did it for, um, he did it for profile, several different labels. But he was just it's just a mastering company that that he, he worked for. He still does it. He still masters stuff, but he does it digitally now. Right. Uh but anyway, I neither here nor there. That's just really way too geeky for anybody watching this show. Um you think anyone's left? No. They're gone. They're all gone. Yeah. I never even got to hear your record pick of the week because you're still gonna give us uh, <laughs> unless your pick is Guardians of the Galaxy. That was my record was pick. It. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. That was my record. It's a record. All right, it is a record. I didn't know if you want to stay with Ladies of the '80s and go for three across the board here. If you had some, nah, I screwed that one all up. Well, when That's you okay. went there, I quickly typed it in. I almost went with Fiona. I thought I'd pull a, another like name out of nowhere. Fiona, it's like remember Fiona? <laughs> no, Fiona Eileen Flanagan. She had like a subtle hit. Lo beautiful girl, long brown hair. Her peak was probably she did a track with Kip Winger. Yep. And then she was on a Miami Vice episode. 
and she was more or less the star of the episode. But she was around the Samantha Fox time. There was that period where a lot of kind of talent came in and out very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were all and, that, and they all they had to look like a glamour model. Yeah. And they all, yeah, be they all had the model look, you know. Yeah. yeah. But they sang. So it wasn't like getting Christy Brinkley to show up and try to pretend she could sing. These were the actual singers. Yeah. Who was it the one that was so pretty? Was it uh and you'll remember her. Was it was it Mika Paris? Was she the one, the R and B singer? Really good singer. Beautiful. Just a beautiful girl. Yeah. Kind of that crystal waters look with the with the short hair. Real pretty. Real pretty. But she was doing some if you say Mika or Micah, Micah Paris, maybe I don't know. Beautiful girl. Micah. Young girl. There was um have you seen the I Would Do Anything? Meatloaf video? Yeah. Okay. You probably don't remember it because you probably only saw it once. I remember it. She had curly hair. Um, no. This is the other girl in it that's got straight hair. Okay. Stupid good looking. And she sings the female part in the video. Well, apparently she got done with the video. The video came out and she got a call from her manager. She was offered not one, not two, not three, four record contracts oh that's right and she wasn't even her wasn't her at all right she can't sing right she couldn't even fake it she just was lip syncing because she was the model in the video but she, it was that period of time when like okay she's way too gorgeous not to jump on and the yeah. weird thing is she cut her hair afterwards still beautiful but not that short linda evangelista beautiful just but not as stunning you know yeah, yeah. welcome to music tuesday night talk yeah, That's right. It all works veer, back into music. I'm going to veer off of it a little bit. Uh, I, I just wanted to try something different. We're off the road at this point, show. Brian. You can't veer anywhere but into another ditch. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I'll probably do a video on this. I asked the question on social media because it was something that occurred to me. I had a couple of inquiries this morning. Nice. About, about my services. This and is for DJing, right? Yeah, not okay, not, good. Yeah, I didn't, not not plumbing. Yeah, I don't think you should stuff disclose you that other stuff you do. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think yeah. keeping that to yourself is really yeah, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't for of yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah, wasn't about plumbing or any yeah. of that. It was it was about, you know, coming do a you know, DJ wedding. Good. Not the Kaiser so say thing you pull, but I'm just we'll leave it there. I'm talking to this guy and the conversation went so well. And I thought about, well, what, how do I, how do I manage to make it go that smooth? Cause I feel like I, it, it worked out really well. So I thought on social media, I will post this question just to see what the answers are to it. Cause I was curious when you're talking to a mobile client, let's just say a wedding client, aside from your date being available. What's the first thing that you want that client to know? It's a sales question. What do you talk about first? You're going to ask them a series of questions, but what's the first thing you want to tell your client about you, about your service, about the event, whatever that happens to be, where do you start? Do you understand where I'm going with that? I totally understand where you're going. And it's funny because I've tried over time to find that you need to know I'm different than everyone else. You need to know what separates me from the pack. You need to know, you need to know. And what I found they actually gravitate towards is the entire interaction because they're building a judgment against you. Oh, you're absolutely right. And by the time you open your mouth, Sometimes the soft sell is better than the, hey, I got to tell you versus, you know what? Ask me a question about what I do or something. Because I've had people say, what makes you different? What separates you from other DJs? And my immediate answer has always been, I don't accept every event that comes my way. Oh, what do you mean? I meet clients all the time. And if I'm not a good fit, I'd rather tell them at the meeting than after the wedding that they didn't dream of. And people respect that kind of honesty, I think. 
they also in their head start thinking, we don't want to be that client that he doesn't work with. So it's not a catch 22. It's just an honest statement of, I don't take every gig that comes my way. Right. Because I'm not the perfect DJ for every gig. There's no such thing as, you know, the perfect DJ, but there is the right DJ and it's got to be the right DJ for you. John, yeah. do you want to do you want to even try to tackle this? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tackle a little of this. It's um, I think you want to have a dialogue before you give up too much information, because uh, usually it's two questions: Are you available on this date, and how much? And if that's all that they're going to base an interview on, then you'll you could very easily just get a goodbye click at the end of the third question. So you want to build a rapport, and you want to start asking them a little bit about how did you hear about me? Tell me about the event. Tell me about what what you think. You know get into their heads a little bit rather than just saying, well, let me tell you about me, 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 because right, right. the customer is important too. And they're like, we're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing us. Yeah. Um, like, like Jay had said, whether to determine whether or not you're a good fit um, sure. and to save yourself headaches down the road. If you just say, Oh, this just sounds like a train wreck and I want no part of it. That's your time to duck and bow out and say, you know, just don't, don't think it's going to work on, where it is, how long it is, whatever, whatever reason. I'm just you not your dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. But, uh, but yeah, just, just to be honest and, 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 and forthcoming and you not try to hide anything. I mean, a lot of times they want to price before they tell you where, how long we're having a party, how much, what is, is it a wedding party? Is it on new year's? You know, they, they want to corner you to, to, you know, some people just call to buy an argument. Um, and, and it's your job to talk around that and just make them feel comfortable and say, do you have anything you want to ask me, you know, before we put this package together, anything you want to know about my background, how long I've been doing this, if, you know, right. I've done parties like this before, uh, just to, just to let's get to know, to know you a little bit. Cause all you are is just a phone number or a link on a web page. Sure. And they've got nothing that, you know, it's just a cold call and it's, yeah. it's what you can do with that, um, to, to try to keep some control over it. That's, that's my two cents on it. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot, hence why I went ahead and made the post. I really like the way I'm doing it now. Now, before I get into any of this, I just want to just make this crystal clear. This is not the right way. This is not the way. This is not gospel. This is just how I'm doing it. No matter how you do it, it's not necessarily the wrong way. We're all going to do things different. But this is how I'm handling it. And I'll go to the go to my answer to my own question. I'll read it here to you. And uh, I may stop here and there to interject something, but this is what I wrote. After getting a rough scope of work, such as location, ceremony, reception times, number of guests, my go-to is actually technical logistics. And I just lost it. Hold on a second. Let me get it back here. Here we go. Without going into great technical detail, I tell them that I have a system that will suit their needs. Remote ceremony, power can be unreliable, so I have a battery-powered solution for that. Reception, all-inclusive sound and lighting that's a little different than what you may have seen before. It will be full on the dance floor, but your guests will be able to have conversations anywhere off of it. To me, that's the foundation, and from there, we can build whatever you want. Now, when I told my client today about, hey, my sound system is a little different than what you might be used to, because it's going to be nice and full on the dance floor, but anywhere off the dance floor, people are going to be have conversations without screaming at each other. And he says, you know what? That's great. You know, just so you know, we really like gospel and Christian music, and we just want it to be fun, and we don't need to be too loud. And then I was able to say, okay, that's, yeah, no problem. I get all of this Christian contemporary singles. And I get all the country singles. And with your help, we could put together something really nice for you that's custom tailored to what your wants and needs are. And he said, well, we also want to have, we also want our guests to have fun. You know, what? and when I went to the little family th hour thing that Jay makes fun of me for. And I explained, hey, this is kind of music for everybody. This is something for grandma, something for your nephew. <laughs> Michael W. Smith. I, probably at this one, yeah. But sorry, just copy. they're younger. They are younger at that, so that might be a little oh, okay. old school for them. But yeah, that I talk about. Yes, you know, after you tell me where your venue is and what you're looking for and how many people you have, and I get some of the information from them about that. 
then I can start to build the foundation of, yes, I have a system for this. I have a light show for this. I have a setup for this. Right. So we're good there. Now, what are we going to do with it? Right. That, that's how it's worked really well for me. I've always mentioned to clients and I try to mention it at the beginning of the meeting. Like the way I do a meeting is I meet up with them. Everyone gets settled in, kind of choose to get my information. And I have a questionnaire and I show them and I say, mm-hmm. hey, this is just a questionnaire I give all my clients. It outlines the responsibilities that I'll have that day and what it is you're looking for. So I don't do cookie cutter events. This will allow you to really make this your day. If you don't want something, you don't have to do it. Yeah. You know, you go to a wedding and every wedding has a yeah. grand entrance. Probably half my weddings don't have grand entrances in the traditional sense. Why? Because my clients were offered options and they chose them. Yeah. But what I always try to say at the very beginning of the meeting, and I don't, when you pose the question, it was such a say something about you that it didn't dawn on me, but it's kind of the same thing where I'll mention, you know what? I just want to make sure that I've got a better understanding of where you guys want to go with things as we go through the questionnaire. I'll go over the things I bring. I really pride myself on never once being told it wasn't loud enough, but I'm also complimented by grandmothers and moms a lot when they say, wow, this was great. Everyone danced and we could talk 10 feet off the dance floor because eventually they're going to bring up that somebody's parents said, oh, you're getting a DJ? Tell them not to be too loud. So the logistic angle of it totally makes sense. Yeah. But I also think whenever you're talking to a client, it's a one by one thing. I don't have a, sure. it has to go this, they may have mentioned something, you know, if the client says, right. well, I'm into music, you won't know. And he mentions Buckethead and I can talk right. to about Buckethead for 10 minutes. That's not what I came into the meeting planning to right. do. Right. No, of course. Of course. You know? And I, I think it's almost like your question could be rephrased as give me three, four or five points that you feel you need to get across to a client that doesn't know you when they're talking to you about considering hiring you for an event. Well, I want to mention I'm different. I want to mention the volume. I want to mention the gear. I want to mention the experience. I want to mention the music, but maybe in a different meeting, all five of those switch to something else. You've got to, you, you've got to be case by case fluid with these things. I would think with you though, Jay, just knowing you and what you do, because you do a lot of repeat business at the same venues. Right. I would think that one of the first things that you would say is, so where is this going to be? Oh, at the yeah. great growing place that I'm at every week. You know what? I play yeah. there a lot. How many people? Probably about, you know, 110. That's usually about average there. That's a sure, great sound. Very familiar with it. Yeah. And and I mean, right there, you're, you're, you're hailing logistics yeah, no. yeah. without getting no, geeky 100%. at all. Yeah. Well, what do you think about vendors? I know that it's come up a lot where clients have said to me, you know, and they don't listen as much as you think. Cause I've said, Oh, I love that venue. Are you in the ballroom or are you outside on the patio? Right. Oh, we're on the patio. Oh, that's a really cool spot. How many people? And later in the conversation, they start going. Um, so, so you mentioned, so you have been there Yeah. and they do that kind of like, yeah, dude, I said that when we sat down, I think I well, said, you, it kinda, you, you alluded to it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, they're trying to absorb I, a lot too. At this oh no. Time. And that's right, John. And that's the thing. One of the big ones that comes up <laughs> out here is the concern, because I think the knot or wedding wire put up a uh, things to worry about when hiring vendors is that vendors they want brides and grooms want their vendors to know the venue. And I think they want them to have an idea who the other vendors are. Because I know it means a lot to them when like there's a photographer I worked with a lot and they would say, I'm like, who's doing your photos? Oh, Jody. Oh. Jody does such amazing work. Oh, we love Jody. Yeah, she had me do her sister's wedding. Well, I didn't say much there, but I said a ton. I said the vendor they love thought I was good enough to do her own family's event. The other thing that, yeah. and this is a bit of advice for the crowd, check the vendors you're working with if you're not working with them all the time. Go to their Instagram. The venue you're talking about, Brian, had a... Um, full moon photo a couple of years ago. And I would say to new clients, Oh, is Jody shooting your wedding? Yeah. Oh, have you been on our Instagram? No here. And I'll go to my phone. Cause I have it saved as a photo. Sure. 
check out this photo. Oh my God, we love that. Yeah, Steve, she's available. She she's took available. that. Yeah. And this is the night, you know, let's check the schedule. Your wedding's on a full moon. You can have this photo. We, we need a full moon photo. We have to reschedule. <laughs> well, you know, or, or anything about any well, style. You know, I noticed, you know, you have gorgeous black hair. Have you guys considered any black and white photos? Check out these black and white photos that this photographer you're working with took. Oh my God, we didn't even see those. Oh, you'd look amazing in this. There's people in general have to be comfortable. They're making a big decision. And I think it's too bad that our industry has allowed clients to have little to no involvement sometimes. I mean, how many of DJs do we talk to that are like, they don't meet the client till the day of the wedding? I mean, that's yeah, just the standard now that we don't meet clients. And a lot of that's COVID. But you don't have the same relationship that five or 10 years ago you had when you met them two or three times before the event at a Starbucks or their apartment or wherever, right? it's a much different relationship. By the time you get there, they've invested five hours, six hours in person with you sure. and maybe just as much on emails and picking out songs. You have a relationship. I get excited when clients go, hey, is there any way to meet us a couple months early and do a site inspection? Yeah, because I want to make your site look better through my eyes because I'm the professional. And when I say, oh, if you have the cake over there, we can have your grand entrance here. That's going to look stunning when you come in with the lighting. Oh, we never thought of that. No, you right. didn't because this isn't what you do for a living. It's what right, we yeah. do. Right. Well, now you're a partner on the team. So that now, now you're a team that you talked about. Yeah. yeah, dialogue is so important. You're absolutely right. Oh, it's, it's huge. Very important. You can make or break it. Absolutely make or break. You could be the greatest DJ on the planet Earth. And if the dialogue doesn't go right, out the door. And you could be the worst DJ in the world and still get the gig. So well, it's like John said. I, I I believe John said that, you know, not every client's his client. It's like, or maybe yeah. you said it, Jay. Yeah, not every client's my client. And never not every client's my client. I mean, if I would have gotten somebody telling me that they're, you know, having an, an event that's several hundred miles away and they need uh, sound for 7,000 people. And it's like, no, you know what? I'm not your guy. You got people. Not your guy. I can recommend people. I, I, yeah. Let me, let me put you in touch with somebody who might be able to help you. I'm just not your dude. And, but, and yeah, I think I just, you need, and what you do very well, Brian, is I think you're good at kind of taking what they're looking for and making it realistic. Because I oftentimes see the sad end results of somebody that sort of lied when they say, Hey, we're going to have 300 people and we need a bump in. Oh, it's going to rage. And then you're going to be awesome. You get there and you're like, where this is the sound system for 300. You have two 12 inch speakers. Yeah, dude, it's going like, to be awesome. Like nine year old QSCs. Yeah. That's it though. No subs, no satellites. Oh, I can rock this party with this. Yeah. No, no, you can't. No. Okay. And that, that sounds like a complaint on QSC. It's not. It's an understanding. Maybe that's not what he should have been doing that night. Maybe a different event would have been a better fit. And what I'm going, said, yeah. I've got, a, I've got a DJ buddy of mine that does a lot of high school events, a lot of college frat parties, does a lot of big parties. He is all about the club vibe that it sounds like you're looking for. Let me see what I can do to hook you up with him. Be honest with the clients. Clients, has this ever happened to you? I had a woman not hire me, tell me that she wanted to hire me, but didn't hire me because it came down to the price of like $200, but she never told me, came back to me and had her girlfriend contact me and hire me and another friend of hers and then told me, yeah, I sent you a couple of friends of mine. I'm like, do you mind if I ask why? She goes, I was super impressed with you, but our budget hit. And the biggest mistake of our wedding was not hiring you because our DJ wasn't worth the money we did pay him. And I saw you do my two friends' weddings and you crushed it. And I really wish I had hired you, but I still recommend you. And I'm like, but you didn't hire me. She's like, no, it came down to the $200. Well, that's always hindsight. Oh. I mean, in every it is, but it, client. Bizarre to be that. recommended by someone that didn't use you. Yeah, that's. And, and that's like another one of those checks in the mail. I love you lines is like, yeah, man, it's not going to work out with our budget for you. But, you know, I'll totally keep you in mind for future events. And, you know, if I know someone getting married, I'll totally recommend you. Why? You're not hiring me. Well, let me let me go back uh, a few minutes when you were talking about, you know, kind of trying to, you know, the speaker system too small for 
the amount of people that were there. One of the qualifying things that I need to know is how many people are going to, what, where is, what's the venue and how many people are going to be there? Right. So if it's, you know, a venue for 150 people and there are 150 people there, I immediately know what system that I need to bring. And I got the scope of work and I can price it out. On the other hand, if they tell me, you know, the venue's going to be a little bigger, it's going to have 350 people there. I can't, I got to think about a different system. Right. You know, I got to think about, you know, more long throw stuff and, you know, kind of go into junior high school dance mode on some of this stuff. But you're being honest about it. That's kind of my point. I yeah, I, yeah, I am. I rock this. And it's like, um, that's out of your comfort zone and it's out of your gear zone. I mean, we've all done events in halls that have other rooms and we've looked over and thought, that's a lot of people. And this is a true story. The QSCs. Yeah. I went over to the DJ. I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? I'm Jay. I'm working next door. Oh, hey, man. I'm, you know, Brian S. Red. I'm like, oh, hey, Brian. Nice to meet you. I've never met you before. How's it going? Good, man. You got a big room tonight. Yeah. I'm like, how many people are here? He's like, I think 350. I'm like, are you running satellites or anything? You got subs under the table? He's like, no. Why? No, just wondering. You know, this many people. I don't, I never know what to bring for sound. I'm like, always. You know, this should be enough. He's like, yeah, I figured these would be fine. And I just walked out and it was a bloodbath. <laughs> it sounded terrible later. Yeah, he was, for a red line and I'm sure. Yeah. He, yeah. he was clipping and pushing and people were complaining and it was a bloodbath. Part of what I do. It felt bad. Part of what I do is I never want to overpromise and underdeliver on a product. Exactly. What I want to do at the end of the night, instead of the client saying, wow, this is about what we expected. I would rather them say, wow, this is so much more than we expected. Yeah, of course. You know, cause if you promise the world and, you know, deliver, you know, a, a small village in Kentucky, then you didn't nail it. Well, Brian, it. here's one that I took from you. And I partially took it from Mikey. I bought the American DJ icon profile plus. Mm. I think it was like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. I didn't do this part, but those of you watching that would like to know what a over deliver under promise is, go to NLFX Pro and order the single monogram for your Gobo projector or buy a Gobo projector. But go through all your weddings for the year and find the groom's last name's first initial. Buy those. So if you need to buy 10, buy 10. If you buy them pre-cut, they're probably going to cost 10 bucks a piece. Somebody should just sell those in a package of every letter in the alphabet. Right. You're going to show up at the wedding. They're going to walk in. And now you have their gobo in the middle of the dance floor. And they're going to look at you and be like, what's that? Oh, it's just a little treat for you guys. Just uh, something I do. Oh, my God. That's so cool. We didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't mention it. It's just one of my services I like to include. Now, it could blow up in your face and they could go, well, damn, I wish we'd known that you did Gobo because we would have done a custom and now we're kind of mad because I'm not changing. Uh, That's what's going to happen, though. I suppose. What's going to happen is they're going to walk away and go, wow, talk about, a, about going above and beyond. Yeah. When I took that thing out for the first time to test it, I used one of the test Gobos. Yeah. The one that I used. The filigree was, one? Huh? Was it like that filigree they have? Filigree. What's a filigree? Filigree is like all the lines and like an old fashioned. No, no, no. It, it, it was like two wedding rings intertwined. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It like a heart. Yes, yes. And I just wanted to get a video of this somewhere. So I took it to this gig and shined it on the wall to take a video of it. And the client was like, oh, my God, that is so cool. Well, I can't believe you. that. That is awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Like it was a gift to them. Yeah. It, it wasn't. In, class. Yeah. I, for some oh, yeah, that, that one's trippy. Yeah. And I've done this, just thrown it on a dance floor. Uh-huh. Squared it. Yeah. And they go, what is that? I go, well, you know, you guys were talking about all the dance music you wanted later on. So I just wanted to give a little different vibe. You guys were really into kind of the psych thing. And I heard the psychedelic request and I'm like, you know, and I showed it at a venue. Sadly, the venue closed, but the owner of the venue saw it and said, can you put that up in one of the trees behind you? I'm like, sure. And I pointed it backwards. He goes, let me ask you, what do these cost? I'm like, I don't know, two, 300 bucks. He goes, could you get six of them? 
and place them around with that thing. I go, yeah, you can get custom glass like of the moon and this and that. He literally was going to spend like four grand and just have these around his venue sure. for weddings because he was so blown away by it. I like where you're going though with with you know the little extras that you maybe you can do. Just a little extra because it will come back because the next person may want to get the custom gobo. You already own the projector. It's going to cost eighty bucks to get the thing cut. You charge mm, one fifty yeah. or something, two hundred, whatever. But don't I mean, nickel yeah. and dime the client. Give a little something more than just. I, but let I them think know that's you're helpful. giving too, and your time is very valuable. When I'm talking about delivery, I'm not necessarily talking about you know a line item delivery. I'm talking about an overall experience. It's going right. You know, I don't. I don't say it's going to be awesome. I say yeah, we're, it should be fine. And you go there and you just it's a, an amazing party, and no one can deny it's an amazing party. But you can absolutely throw in those extras. One thing that I did recently at a wedding. It was the last same sex wedding I did last year. I brought my eight cans, 12 of them, because I knew they had a stage there that I could light up, but I also wanted to light the room up. I thought it would look great. So I set all this stuff up. And when one of the grooms came to me to say hello, I said, you know what? I brought you a wedding gift. This one's on me. I, I did some extra lights for you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. That, that That's really cool. So no charge. It's the gift to you. And I got great video from it. It was, it wasn't, but it wasn't a big deal to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do that kind of stuff too. That's helpful. There, and it could be something small. I'll, I'll give you the million dollar one. You want the million dollar one? I'll put I it always want to, I'm, I'm never going to say no to million dollars. Here you go. Go online and buy white control vinyl tractor record box, Serato. I don't know, eight bucks, 10 bucks, the vinyl, 15 bucks, the vinyl, something like that. A record, a record. Come on, talk like a big boy. Then go to the wedding party and the immediate families. Give them a Sharpie and have them sign it. And in the middle, a good idea. sticker where the middle of the record is and have it say, congratulations, Brian and Blanca from your DJ, Jay Brand and Entertainment. And then at the end of the night, hand it to them. Because I guarantee they'll frame it. I guarantee it'll end up on a wall somewhere. And there's your logo for everyone to see. Where'd you get this? Oh my God, our DJ did that. He did? Yeah, he went to the wedding party and our parents and our brothers and sisters and had them sign it. You And if you want to go to the next level, you get the glass frame that has the little, like, you know, golden platinum certification type sticker on it that says, you know, in recognition of an amazing couple that got married on this date, to Brian and Blanca from their DJJ of Brandon Entertainment, and you give it to them later framed. Just saying. Just step up here, Brian. Just- John, what do you have to say about all that? A million dollars. Yeah, a million dollars. Yeah, a million dollar. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, and I probably gave them. I didn't come here to do carpentry. Now I got to frame something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Now we're both. We got a math day on thing, too. Appreciate it. Two so, by nine. I got to get this thing home safe. Yeah. Two by seven. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. That's definitely given a little above and beyond. I mean, it's, and it's memorable. Vinyl, especially if you're using vinyl. It might yeah. be the only reason you want to use vinyl at a wedding because you could take it off the player, have them sign it, turn it over to the control tone. At the end of the night, pick it up all signed and hand it to them. They're going to be thrilled. You got to get. You got to go. And it's, and it's personal. It's better than a refrigerator magnet or a pen. or a. And it's know, got your yeah. company name on it for everyone to see. And that, that that's that's a really cool thing to do. That is. And I agree that, you know, people are gonna love that. People are gonna yep. love a lot of things though. Uh they they would love it if I flew Cupid in every time we did the Cupid shuffle and had and lead it for everybody. It's not feasible for it, me to do. It, this, this this isn't top J idea night. Brian. No, I no, I I'm I'm not hating on your ideas. I like no, your no, ideas. You're, I don't want you to misunderstand Jasper. me. No, I don't no, want I, you to I, misunderstand me. I'm not hating on your ideas by saying this. No, no, no. I know. I'm just kidding. What, what, what I'm saying is, is that there are a lot of things your clients like. And I hear this argument a lot from DJs. Like, why do you go to all this? Well, they like it. Yeah. Well, I know they like it. They like it when you come in and you only charge $400. And they like it yeah. when you deliver a performance that's actually a pretty damn good performance. We know DJs like this. 
You are very you good. What they do? Huh? Two bucks. You bought those bottles for like a no. Bottle. I bought them for th- uh, these. Yeah, uh, three for a dollar. Three for a dollar. Thirty three items cents. for a dollar. Yeah, and they're great. Yeah. Let me ask you though. It didn't create a memory, right? Not yet. No, but even once you set them up in the bathroom or Halloween, it's not going to be that wow factor memory. But I'm sure you've got some vinyl or a truck or a big ticket item, a big ticket item that you remember every detail about its purchase. Weddings are a lot like that. Somebody pays you a couple grand to do their wedding. They're going to remember all of it and they're going to use really high standards. You just have to be higher than the standards. That's no, all. I, it, well, all, all I was trying to say is, is that some people will buy elaborate setups and elaborate light shows. and Or we were just talking about somebody we know who bought a bunch of product that we knew that they really didn't have an opportunity to use because they weren't really working. But right. they paid big money for it. No. Yeah, of course your client likes it if you had any clients to sell them to or to even give them to. Uh what I try to do, and I and I just want to make it clear when I talk about this under promise over deliver, I'm not giving them more like line items. I am no. simply just giving them a better experience than they than I promised them in the first place. Mm-hmm. Right. That's so, all I'm saying. You can go see. the other way. Give the expectation. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I you're exceed expectations. The, you're also using the tools you need. Yeah, I think it's cheap of a DJ to say this is a very dark room with dark brown walls and a dark brown ceiling. I'm gonna, you know, I can do these 20 things for all this money. Versus saying to them, you know what? I've worked this room before. Here's a photo, a video, whatever. This was an amazing night. And I'm getting the same kind of party vibe off you guys. And this is what I did. And now those line items become the item. Right. You have to say, I think you should have 12 up lights. And then I should do this, this, this. You tell them what they need, which you're doing with the logistical aspect. Yeah. Tell them everything they need and then price it. Don't. I can do it for a thousand. But if you want it to be good, it's 1200. Great is 1600. Yeah. You should. Sorry, pick like that. Yeah. I think you're lessening the value because you're showing them you're not giving them everything. I've never checked into a hotel and had them say, Hey, you know what? A comforter on your bed would be good, wouldn't it? That's 10 bucks. Like, I'll never fly Spirit because I understand Spirit charges for absolutely everything. That's not why I'm I'm taking care of. I trust one way to look at it to do it. And I trust my DJ that if I need up lights, they're not going to sell them to me. They're going to tell me I need them. And that's just part of the overall package that they're giving me and saying, this is, that's why, you know, the end of the meeting is I've got all my notes. I know everything you've told me. I know how important all of this is. I know you're really into the architectural aspects. I know you're really into this. This is what I see. Bang. This is my price. What, what I want to do uh, just with that in mind, I want to go back to what we were originally talking about which was, what do you want these people to know right off the bat? If the question is how much, if that's their first question. Probably not your client. No, I'll answer it. And and I've answered it a lot. And they're still my clients. I'll tell them, hey, look, just so you know, it starts here. And it goes up from there. But you, then you didn't answer it. What I need, well, however, what I need to do. Not it starts at 12 and it goes up. It's built upon. It's, it's well, just a flaw. Let, 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 let me let me without the information. Let me finish. What what I say to them is it starts here and it goes up from there depending on your needs and wants. So what I really need is an idea of what the scope of work is so I can give you a more accurate quote. Yeah. So we can be here, but in and one other thing that I will say to them is I really don't like charging people for things they don't need. That's a good pullback. Mm-hmm. I really don't like to do that. Is, so let's find out no, everything no, that you need no, and what you don't need and find out where your price is. Yeah. Because I don't like charging people for things they're not going to use. I do that with the extra time. I think we talked about this recently. Somebody was saying that they want to go, you know, like this on this eight hour gig thing, this eight hour dance party. They want me, you know, well, 
10, but we want extra time. Like, look, sure, I could charge you for that right now. We could put it in the contract. But what happens if that night, 10 o'clock, you decided that, you know what? This is good. We're tired. We've had a great experience. It's time to end it. What if that's what you decide at 10 o'clock? You still paid me for this. It's in the contract. You don't get it back. How about instead of that, you have the option for another two hours. Heck, that. you have the option for another hour. Maybe you don't want to go two. Maybe one is enough. Yeah, we had this talk the other night. And yeah. it's like, that, I get it all the time where yeah. it's like, we're in the room till one. What time is cocktail? Six. Right. Okay, so dinner's at seven. Yeah. yeah. So you have six hours. Dinner's an hour and a half. You have four and a half hours of dancing. Is that something you feel comfortable saying right now your group can do? Because I would feel much more comfortable contracting you till 10 or 11 with the understanding that the hourly addition is the same as the contract. Right. So I would, you know, weddings should end not when they should end, but when they shouldn't end. And the difference between ending at 10 and 1030 can be the difference of 200 people in a room. And the memory is, man, I wish that wedding had gone longer. Everyone was having so much fun. That was having, a 10. Yeah. 10 well, having, having said that, I think it's always better to leave people wanting more. Ex- absolutely. I mean, how, how many know? concerts have you gone to where at the end of the concert, you're like, oh my God, I'm so glad it's over. Versus how many concerts have you gone to where it's like, man, I wish it, we just would have gone longer. Yeah. You feel obligated to yell one more song, but do you really want one more song? Well, or have you funny. been sitting there long enough already? It's funny you bring that up. If I have a hard ending, which I do out here, if I'm outside, the hard ending is 10 o'clock. It's a noise issue. Yeah. It's not 10 01, 10 30. Yeah, it's sure. 10. So what I have started to do, because if the crowd is rowdy and they end at exactly 10 and they're screaming and yelling until 10, 15, I get the hit because I inspired them to be crazy. So I start winding it around 20 of quarter of, I tell them, this is your last song. If it's a fast song at like 947, if I end that song and they scream one more song, one more song, I'll play it. Cause I got 10 minutes to go and then I'm done. Yeah. So it's don't ever end on the hour because if they want one more and it would benefit you, you can't do it. The only catch 22 on that. Certainly at least so that you've got the latitude to say, Oh, you do want one more. I've already got, you know, shut up and dance loaded and you hit play and the crowd goes ballistic. Yeah. They, I've done it a million times. They've never been, asked for one uh, more after one more. After they one, bounce. I've had they them. know what it and yeah. Once the one more is done, they're gone. I've been doing the encore like that, as most professional you know, musicians do when you go to a concert where it's built in. You know it's really going to happen. Um, you know, very seldom they don't do an encore. It has to be a really bad night they they're not, not do an encore. But they may not ask. Right. They may not jump up and down with one right. more song, one more song. Right. Because again, you've got an end. This isn't when I hear of DJs go until 1030 at a 10 o'clock end. And I'm like, why? Well, because they were having so much fun. Then did you did you do it for free? No. Then what you did was you told them that your business isn't really a business. It's you hanging out. Well, I'm not going to screw my clients over by cutting them. No, no, you didn't. What you did was you screwed yourself. Well, and you that, that's, work on the that's, contract. That's, you can look that at it that way. Business. Sure. Uh, what, what my lawyer, gonna, is he gets quick to cheat him house, says contracts are contracts. The only thing that I was going to say is I've been doing that fake ending, false ending, and encore to bring me to the hour yep. since I was a teenager. Where I have I started in 1963. No, I was just going to say where I have screwed up more than once because it just slips my mind. Yeah. Is that I don't always let the client know that's what I'm doing. Ah. Uh, so I say thank you, good night, and then I get a drunk, angry bride ringer. Oh, we got ten more minutes to go. Why are you ending this like we got you? Hey Racine girl, just you have it down. to let the client in on the gag. If you oh, let yeah. the client in on the gag, you can do this and it's a good idea. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yes, I have I made the mistake of it just slipping my mind. Oh yeah, no, I, I get that, but so yeah, and I know your position. You're behind the gear more than you're running around. Yeah, I've made it a practice. 
again, because I came from boats. That's where I really cut my chops and boats have no forgiveness. When the boat cruises over, the lights are on. There is no, yeah, we'll party dockside. No, we won't get off the boat. So that's <laughs> right. where I came up with my timing. Yeah. Then I went into outside events during COVID and prior where it's like, no, you're done at this time or you'll never work here again. I always get my clients that 15 minute window if everything's going great. Cause even though they're dancing, they're saying good night to people. And I yeah. say to them, Hey, just to let you guys know those last two songs we talked about, they're coming up. I want to make sure you're nearby. So when I say, Hey, this is a dedication from the bride and groom to all of you for making tonight so wonderful. And I play wonderful tonight or whatever I play, you're nearby to dance. Cause it's important that you then get that other good night with everyone. Oh no, we're going to stay right here. Okay, great. It's in their head. This is over. Right. And I find that, you know, and I've had the same thing you have. What are you talking about? It's 10 of, we're not done. Oh no. I mean, I meant to do this. Something else that I, yeah. Another thing that I've on, are important. you have to let the, 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 the venue know that's your plan too. Yep. And, and yep. the reason I say that is because a few times this has actually happened to me over the course of the last a long time, we won't even say, but I said, thank you. Good night killed my lights expecting it just to be black in the room and hearing people you know want an encore only for the bartender to hit the house lights because yeah. they were waiting for me to say that so you got to let everybody in on it's well, they all, it's not everybody it. obviously yeah. not the audience but you need to let the client and the staff know what your plan is 100 percent, and and it'll go better that way for you just Absolutely. a little bit by the way i did a wedding in august August or September of 2009, right after the Sopranos finale. Yeah, the, yeah. And we had arranged it with the bride and groom and myself that I would, I said, you know, for the ending, I'm like, you guys like Sopranos? Oh my God, was that an amazing ending? I go, let's do that. I'll time the song out. It'll end on Don't Stop, the same spot. We'll talk to the wait staff and have them standing at all the lights around the room. And when they hear don't stop and the song ends, they'll kill the lights in the room. And they did. And it was amazing. Yeah. It would be tough today to mimic that because it wouldn't mean anything to anybody. It might. But it made for a hell of a good ending. It Same might. way I played the back end of Layla. As and the killed everybody. Right. If you had don't stop and all the lights go out, everybody ducks. <laughs> <laughs> We're still here. Played the back end of Layla and shot everyone. Well, if they were in a pink Cadillac, <laughs> sure. but they should have kept their mouth shut. You don't buy a fur coat right after it when, you know, Jimmy tells you not to, you listen to yeah, Jim, do what you tell. You end up hanging in a meat truck. See, this is what happens after we, we go too long. We start yeah. going off on this kind of stuff. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for joining us this week. Come back and see us next week where we might actually talk about music again. We mentioned a song or two. Yeah. We did. We did. We did a nice record roundup and thank you for that. John, as always. John is going to be uh, on tour on the road up this week, doing a tour. Lake Placid. Willie Nelson in it. Spinning his tunes up there for uh, the yeah. people of the Great White North. Almost. Oh, ski jumpers. For yes. the Olympics, right? Yeah, it's a ski jump event. It's the World Cup, they call it up there. It's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'll be back home Monday. Nice. Fingers crossed. So nice. we, yeah. we wish you the best as Quick always. Now. Jay, you are leaving somewhere this week on a jet plane? Um. No, I am leaving next weekend with Pulse to go to Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. This week I'm in town. Then right. I'm in Vegas. Then I'm home for two weeks. Then I'm in Vegas again. Okay. And so, me, I'm yeah. just going to be here in Milwaukee. So Brian's going to be record shopping at the... Going to be at the for, for, for a dollar <laughs> store. <laughs> uh, hot bargain shop on Dollar Day, if I can. Yeah. Nice. He's going to be right. working on the Tradio version of our show <laughs> that you can pick up on digital radio. We have Swap Shop and Tradio. Want to check those out? All right, kids. Whatever Jay says.